share, share information as it relates to um, um, the Census Bureau and how you leverage the data you know, in your business. But before we begin, I always like to do a little housekeeping. Um, <clears throat> again, it's all about collaboration. So please make sure you put your name, business name, location, email and contact information and your areas of expertise in the chat. We're all about a community and all about teaming and understanding how to work together. Next week, uh, we're gonna have part two of you have to bid to win. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Smith, who completed Attorney Chandler's class in June along with Mr. Henry, has submitted 50 bids and have currently won four contracts. So she's going to uh, talk to you about her process and what she's been doing to expedite and win um, the contracts at the end of the year. We also, um, for those of you who have completed the program, Attorney Chandler will be, will be hosting her next boot camp beginning October the 2nd. Again, it's time for you to apply what you've learned through our program. Tomorrow and next week, we'll be hosting the information session on the next cohort. And the next cohort will start September 26th. And uh, we only have a couple of more days with the early special, early bird special. So make sure you share and pass it on to the community for those that you know that will be interested in this. Also, um, we have uh, the accounting bootcamp. Um, to me, both is just as important. There's no need if you're gonna win a contract and you're, you don't have a accounting system that's gonna be in compliance. So we need to make sure we have all our I's and T's dotted. And today, I think I uh, we're going to, uh, and I may have misspoken here. We're not necessarily going to look out, look at federal contracts and the data. I'm so excited that you decided to join us and share with us on how we really use the C Census Bureau data as it relates to your business, because so often. We don't understand why they're collecting this data and how does that really apply to us from a personal uh, viewpoint as well as from a business viewpoint. So without further ado, um, Mr. Wooten, I'm going to turn it over to you. But also before we get into the website, can you kind of give us a oversight of an overview of exactly why it's important that we participate, one, in getting the data, and how does that as a whole affect us from a uh, personal and business viewpoint? Absolutely. Uh, so again, thank you for the opportunity to share uh, with your group. Um, it was a pleasure meeting with you at the previous conference. So again, thank you for the opportunity to come share. Um, I'll actually be talking about that a part of my presentation, but I think that's a great point to just start with. One of the things, so I've been at the Census Bureau for 25 years, and one of the things that's very interesting, and I've worked on the economic side of the Census Bureau, because again, so many people know us for the 2010 Census, the 2020 Census, they only know us for those 10-year big blocks. Um, but what we, what people don't realize is a lot of the business data that you hear about, the measurements of the economy, all the different sectors, a lot of that information is coming from the U.S. Census Bureau. So we measure, that's a major component of what we do is measuring the health of the economy. And what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how some of those tools can also, as a business, help you make more informed decisions. But to Paula's question, why is it important to respond to this information? One of the unfortunate components through our data and through our research is the minority community tends to be some of the under responding areas as it relates to both the demographic surveys and the business surveys as well too. So one of the questions is to Paula's point, 
Um, well, why does it matter? Why is it important for us to respond? Number one, it gives us a better indication of what is going on in our communities. So the data that I'll be showing you all today, I'll be showing number of establishments, the payroll for particular industries in a particular area. That's information that's coming directly from businesses. So if you want to know what's going on in a particular business or in a particular industry, not individual businesses, but if you want to know what's going on in the industry, we're getting that information from you as a respondent in that particular industry. So if you own a restaurant and you're getting a survey, that response information goes into an aggregated total of information related, let's say, to the restaurant industry in your particular area. And that's important because in many cases, data is the driving factor for business decisions, for business, for banks. Um, even though while I'm not in government contracting, it's a big part of the data-driven data -driven decisions for us to decide if we're going to select the contractor or not. Not only do we want to see experience, we want to see your abilities, we also want to see data as it relates to your business. So all of the elements of data are important. A lot of times as I talk with businesses, people will say, oh, I just want to open a business. Oh, okay, great. Why do you want to open a business? Well, you know, it's something that's my passion. Wonderful. Why are you picking this location? Well, it's where I live. Okay, that's one reason, but is that the best reason? Maybe you should look at the next county because maybe the wages are higher there. Maybe the income for communities, for the households is higher there. So again, all of those decisions, the more data you have allows you to make more decision. And in many of those cases, the data is also coming from the responses to these surveys. So. In a long wind away, Paul, that's the answer to that question of why that's so important. And so are you all the ones that collected uh, to determine the unemployment rates? Is that tied in with you guys or is that strictly coming from the Department of Labor? That's coming from the Department of Labor. So mm -hmm. many of the federal statistical agencies, in some cases, we have um, sort of cross lines, we cross each other. So that comes from Department of Labor, but we incorporate some of that information in some of our surveys as well. So we work very closely with Department of Labor, Department of Transportation. Um, as it relates to international trade, we do a joint release with the Bureau of Economic Analysis. So goods and services for international trade. So we have, we work very closely, but in some cases, the source data is coming from Department of Labor as it relates to unemployment. And I think, again, just from, let's just start with the personal, just to educate our community and why this data is important and that we respond. So from a personal um, viewpoint, when we're responding to the data, that data now impacts how much funding, am I correct, that sure. particular uh, community may receive based on the data that's captured through you guys, am I correct? That is correct, especially as it relates to, so in particular, we're talking about the decennial census, where you're talking about your 2010, your 2020 census, where it's an entire census of the entire United States and um, housing. So just, again, from a pure perspective of numbers, if I look at county number one, and county number one says it has 500,000 people, and I look at county number two, county number two has 600,000 people. But in actuality, county number one actually does have 600,000, but 100,000 people didn't respond. On its face, who's going to get more funding? The county that shows that they have 600,000 people. That is the raw element of the data perspective that, again, people need to be aware of to say, well, I, I don't, I don't want to respond and well, it's not that important. At the end of the day, those are numbers that the federal government as a whole is using to then make a decision where to allocate funding. Oh, there's more people in this county, I'm gonna send more money there, period. It's, and that that's the harsh reality. But again, people at times are more skeptical of the government, there's a distrust. What are they using this information for? Why did this government wanna know this information? So again, that is why opportunities like today give us, because I am a part of the government, gives us an opportunity to say, well, here's what we're here for. Here's how the data is used. Here's how the data is protected. But at the end of the day, here's also how you can use this data. So not only are we collecting this data, but one of the things that I'd like to be able to show is, here's how can you can use this data. So we, we collected it. 
but now here's how you can also use it. So it's not just, oh, they're just collecting all this information from me. I don't know where it goes. I'll mm -hmm. show you today where some of that information goes and then how you can actually use it. That's great. Great summary. I'm going to turn it over to you. You can share your screen. <laughs> I have made you the co-host. But I okay. think data is what drives everything. And until we begin to be a part of it and understanding it, we're not um, helping ourselves. So thank you again. Yep, thank you. And like I said, thank you for the opportunity to share because it's a, it's good for us to have these types of platforms to at least be able to share to get a better sense. Okay, so let me share my slides, my entire screen here. Okay, do you all see my slides? We can. Okay, so I will open this. Uh, all right, can you still see my slides? We can. Okay, great. So I'll go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give so um, Paul, that was a great introduction. So some of this that I've shared with that I've just shared now with the group are some things that allow me to move through so I can get to the actual demonstration a little faster. But as stated, my name is Omari Wooden uh, with the U.S. Census Bureau. And the core of what we're going to be talking about today is how you can use census data to either open or expand your business. One of the things that Paula had discussed with me is a major focus of this organization and you all is to look for federal contracts, but also to raise awareness on your consumer side of your business operations. So while you're looking for federal contracts, there's also a component of your business that is also involved in the non-government contract side. And that's what I'm really gonna be highlighting today. Um, I've already kind of given a brief introduction of the Census Bureau. I'm gonna talk about some of our notable surveys, but then I'm really gonna spend a lot of time in two of our data tools, one called the Census Business Builder. And then I'm also gonna highlight another tool called My Community Explorer. So again, as I mentioned, you'll see all of this data that we're collecting. How can you ultimately end up using this data that'll be beneficial to you as a business? Again, some of this I had talked about, but again, people know us mostly for the 2010 census, the 2020 census. Um, actually at the conference Paul and I attended, people came up to the booth. This was, I guess, about two, three weeks ago. People came up to the booth and some of the first questions they asked was, hey, I thought the 2020 census was over. Why is census here? But one of the things that we wanna remind people as it shows here on the slide, we conduct about 130 surveys every year. So in addition to the big 10 year survey, we're conducting 130 surveys every year. And of those 130, about 70 of those are coming from our business and economic side of the Census Bureau. So again, I already talked some about the decennial census, which everybody knows us for. We also have the American Community Survey, which is an ongoing annual survey, which measures different components of the nation's population. But again, what I'll be focusing on is the economic side and two of those censuses the economic census and the census of governments. Those are two five-year surveys where we're measuring business and local government um, spending and employment and so forth. So very quickly, just to break down how our economic programs are organized. Again, we release about 70 surveys every year covering pretty much every sector of the economy in the United States. And the best way to look at that, and again, all of this will make more sense as I start to go through the data tools. The way to look at that is through a pyramid in a sense. At the top of the pyramid, we've got our high frequency content. Information that's again released on a bi-weekly basis. So again, people talk about, oh, this is every 10 years. We've got content that we're releasing every other week that's measuring business activity. Then as we start to come down the pyramid, now we start to looking at more monthly and quarterly surveys where these tend to be more snapshots where maybe they may be at a national level because the sample size is smaller, but it's just looking at a national snapshot picture. Those are your monthly indicators and your quarterly indicators. As we start to come down the pyramid, we now start to look at our annual programs. Now our annual programs start to look at a larger sample size. You start to see now more trend data because the sample size is, lar is larger, which again, it also takes more time to compile that data because the sample size tends to be much larger. 
And then as I mentioned, and I'll talk about on the next few slides, every five years we conduct our economic census and our census of governments, which is the most comprehensive data where we're really starting to get into a greater level of geography, greater sample size, and then lastly, all of this is also sitting on top of foundational administrative records where we're pulling information that is publicly available to reduce the burden on respondents to access information that is available. And what I'll do too, right before I get into the demonstration, I'll make sure I pause to see if there are any questions that are uh, pending. Because again, I wanna be make sure that I'm mindful to you all's time as well. And as I was talking about earlier, the importance of responding, that was our or is our marketing statement or basically our promotional statement for the 2022 economic census is that your response makes a difference. Because all the information that I'll be talking about is ultimately information that's coming from businesses. This again is conducted every five years. And as I stated earlier, is the most comprehensive measure of economic data in the United States. It's covering all 19 economic sectors that cover over 950 industry codes. And we're gonna see those industry codes when I actually go through the demonstration. This spans 21,000 geographic areas. So not only is this at the national level, the state level, metro area, we also start to get into county level data, which again helps you as businesses make more informed decisions at the greater level of geography versus something that's just in my state, I can now get down to the county level to make informed decisions. This includes number of establishments, products, revenue, employment. And again, I'm gonna be showing all of that information through the demonstration that I'm gonna show you in a second. And I mentioned this earlier, historically our lowest responses tend to come from entrepreneurs and smaller businesses for a variety of reasons. What is this? Why am I responding to this? What are they doing with my data? Hopefully through this presentation, you'll have a better sense of what we are using this data for. So the economic census is a sampling of businesses with employees. So this is not measuring non-employers. We actually capture non-employers through a different survey. But the reason why I'm highlighting the 2022 economic census is that it's currently in the field. Uh, we actually have sent out respondents response or invitations to respond to businesses right now. So businesses are actively responding to the 2022 economic census. So you'll see here the graphic on the slide, you'll see that there are about, there are more than 30 million businesses in the US. Of those 30 million, 8 million are employer businesses. And then of those 8 million, 4 million receive an invitation. So we're reaching out to 4 million businesses, employer businesses to complete the 2022 economic census. Some of the things that we're incorporating in this newer economic census or this particular economic census, we've included touch screens, 3D printing, robotics, teledyne medicine, cryptocurrency, cannabis. So as our economy is evolving, we want to make sure that some of the survey information that we're collecting is consistent with our economy. And it's interesting, one of the questions I, knew, I usually will get is, well, why is it called the 2022 economic census when we're already about to get to the end of 2023? The reason for that is the businesses are reporting 2022 year in data. That's why I still call it the 2022 economic census. So the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about a couple of notable surveys. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get into the data demonstration, the demonstration of our data tools um, that I think will really hopefully will resonate with you all as businesses. So two of our programs that again that I will show you in this data tool are called County Business Patterns and Non-Employer Statistics. These are annual programs. County Business Pattern measures employer <laughs> businesses. And it in, was there a question? No. I think oh, just... okay. I'm sorry. I thought I'd heard some. Okay. So county business pattern, which measures employer businesses. And again, it's going to incorporate the number of establishments, employments, annual payroll for pretty much every industry in the United States. As I mentioned earlier, we've got our non-employer data. So this is for data for self-employed businesses. And again, providing the number of firms and revenue for you to, again, to get a complete picture of a particular industry to not only see the employer businesses, but to also measure the non-employers as well. And we're gonna see that in a second. Another very notable tool is called our annual business survey. 
which measures, again, employer businesses, but it targets and it measures the demographic of the business owner. So the information is broken down by race, ethnicity, gender, and veteran status of the business owner. So if we want to find out how many women-owned businesses are in a particular geography, that is captured through our annual business survey. Want to know how many veteran-owned businesses are in a particular geography? We capture that again through our annual business survey. And you said this is um, right now. Year. I'm sorry. Was that a question? That data is collected every year. That data is collected annually. That's correct. And it is also pulled from. Um, also, a part of it is also pulled from administrative records. But yes, that is an annual survey. And so, from my perspective, when you're telling me this. Um, as we looking for uh, government contracting uh, teaming partners, we could potentially look at that data and identify people in that particular state or area to reach out to, or is it all generic? Do so they it's all aggregated. Okay. The information that we release is always aggregated, so it will not release company information, but it will let you know in a particular geography how many women-owned, Black women-owned businesses are in a particular geography, but we will not reveal who the businesses are. Hmm. We will not, we, we don't disclose company information or hmm. personal information. All right. All right, so this is one of the tools that I'm going to be highlighting called Census Business Builder. Um, you'll see that I have a QR code on the screen. So if you're interested in following along with me, feel free to take a picture of the QR code. What the QR code also lets you know is this tool is mobile optimized. So not only can you do the information that I'll be doing today on your laptop, but you can also pull the same information that I'll be showing you on your cell phone as well. Actually, again, at a conference that I had just attended, I did the exact same thing. I was having some problems with my laptop. It wasn't pulling up the information. So I pulled up the exact same information on my cell phone and was able to show somebody. Um, I believe they were a roofing. It was a roofing contractor. He was interested in, hey, what's the roofing industry in his particular county in Alabama? I pulled up the number of roofing contractors that were in his county in Alabama right there on my phone. So I'm gonna also kind of walk through that as well. So some of the key features, again, that I'll be showing you all in a second are the dashboard, which is gonna show all this information. You see that everything's kind of circled in red, but one of the things that this tool will do is it will show population. It will show other, it will show the total count of businesses in a particular region. I'm gonna show you some of the really interesting features in terms of some of the ratios that I think, again, are very, very helpful for a business to make a particular decision. And then all this information, not only is it overlaid on an interactive map, but it then also can be converted into a PDF form. So again, if you're looking to create a grant proposal, create some sort of, um, industry analysis. Not only is this in a visual format, but this can also be converted into a report that can be turned into a PDF file that you can then hand to somebody if that's needed. Because again, not necessarily directly tied to government contracting, but as you're doing a business grant proposal, business loan, the bank will probably want to see that as a part of your business loan to see what is the demographic makeup of the area that you're looking to either open or expand the business to. So we're actually gonna walk through all of this in a second. So this is an example of the report section that comes up. So not only can you capture this information, you can download it into a PDF, you can even download the data set into an Excel file for you to further manipulate and use the data. And what is also great too, is the URL that is created based on anything that I'm demonstrating today. If I capture that URL and send it to someone else, like Paula says, hey, that's that's really cool. I wish I could recreate that exact thing myself. The URL will actually save to the report that I generate. So if I could send this literally to someone else. So again, showing my age, you may not hand this to a bank anymore. They may say, well, send the file to me. You capture this URL, the URL will exactly have what I will be pulling up on the screen. The second tool that I will give a brief, brief demonstration because the focus will be census business builder, but these two tools work together. 
is a tool called My Community Explorer because it combines both demographic business and resiliency data to help users identify underserved areas, communities at the both community, county, and state levels. So one of the things that I've seen throughout the years of working with businesses, not only are businesses in it to make a profit or to, again, again, make a profit. One of the things, too, that businesses also realize is whatever my particular industry, I'm serving a need that's looking to help the community. And what this tool particularly does is it looks at resiliency data to see if my particular business may be of a greater need to a need that to a community that might be a greater risk. So some of those data elements include households below poverty, households without a vehicle, households with a disability, and you'll also see households with or without broadband. Because again, some of the services or businesses that I've worked with, um, we've got home health care providers. We also have um, home counseling or counseling services. And those are industries where people will say, well, I need to really find out, can my business serve this community because this community has a lot of needs. So that's what the My Community Explorer tool will ultimately do. And again, it allows you to get down into a greater level of geography. Not only can I look at a state level, but then I can then zoom into, for this example, I zoomed into Los Angeles. And then you can get to really get into a breakdown of what's needed or where the challenges are in a particular community. All right, so now I'm gonna actually go through the demonstration. I will pause quickly to see if there are any questions and I'll actually then pull the tool up. This is good information. No one has questions. All yeah. right. So can you all see my screen um, for the website? Yes. OK, great. So so I had the QR code up through the presentation, but also wanted to show you all how you can navigate to these tools that we're going to be using. So we go to census.gov, the main landing page. Since we're going to be looking at data, you put your cursor on the item that says data, and we're looking at data tools and apps, but I'd normally like to click on data equity tools. Once you click on data equity tools, the first item that will be listed will be Census Business Builder, which of course my computer's running this stuff. Okay, there we go. So once you click on data tools, the first item that will be listed is Census Business Builder, which is what we're gonna be looking at. So you go to census.gov, click on data, data equity tools, and then the first item listed will be Census Business Builder. So this is Census Business Builder. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through an example of how you can use this tool as a business to find out where is a good opportunity for me to get a measure of the industry for a particular business, again, across a wide range. I've done this demonstration for a wide range of different types of examples from pest control, roof contractors, barber shops, beauty salons, and so forth. But you'll see on this landing page, one of the first things that the system wants me to do is to pick a geography. You'll see in the background that the whole United States is lit up, but it really wants you to do a deeper dive. So again, I can do something at the national level if I wanted to see something across the entire country. But what I wanna do is I wanna do a deeper dive into, let's say Charlotte, North Carolina. Go to Atlanta. So if I'm, how about Atlanta? Okay, so let's change this. Let's go Atlanta, which I believe is Fulton County. Is that correct? It's a couple of counties. That's that's. It's a couple of counties, and and one of the things, because you'll notice, so Paula just said, well, let's take a look at Atlanta, and I said, well, that's Fulton County. But let's see with this data, it's for the most richest information is going to sit at the county level, because once you start to go beyond the county level we start to get into disclosure issues where let's say there's only one supermarket in a particular geography. So that's the reason why for me, I'm so familiar with the different counties because we are want to work at the county level. So we're gonna select Fulton County, Georgia. So again, like for Chicago, I've looked up Cook County. For Charlotte, I've done um, Mecklenburg. County. So again, Harris County at Houston. So again, those are some of the examples. And of course, my internet is running super slowly. So once you select the county, the system is then going to dive into that particular county, and then we'll be able to see uh, what's going on in a particular county. 
All right, so it's trying to see all of this content. So again, and this is actually an interesting example. So all of those different surveys that I talked about, what this system is doing, it's pulling in all the data from some from those different surveys. One of the biggest complaints at the Census Bureau that we received is while we have a lot of data, it's dispersed all over the place. You've got people data over here, you have business data over here, and it's hard because there's so much content. So what this tool does is it brings all of the, not all of it, but it brings a lot of that content into one singular tool. You look at the different types of geography. So as you see, as the map is trying to render, some things that you know, this dashboard right here in the bottom center, you'll start to see some of the information that's coming up. So let me know the median household income in that particular county. And that's the high school graduation rate. And that's we know the home ownership in that particular county. And what's interesting that I'll be focusing on is also you know, the number of employers, the number of employer residents in that particular geography. So again, as you'll see, the map is rendering. So you'll see that we've got about 59,000 employer establishments, which is based on the quarterly updates, versus which is showing 1,000 employer establishments. So that's all the types of businesses that are in Fulton County, Georgia. Kind of breaking up just a little. So, okay. And that might be me, because maybe my network is yeah. mm -hmm. But This thing is just a spinning, spinning, spinning. So you see how it is now pulling up the map. The map is rendering, and it's trying to pull in all that content. Normally, Friday afternoon isn't too bad with network. But clearly, it is not today. Somebody, uh, since Paula wanted to look at Atlanta, I had pulled up a page for Charlotte, um, which is already rendered. So okay. let's see if this allows me to move a little faster. Um, so now, what this is, I actually pulled up Maverick. You can see it has Charlotte. So Charlotte is of Mecklenburg County in North Carolina. So again, you'll see that the map is now rendered this information. But then, let me know that 103 established, it's about 150. Okay, that I need to know just generally for establishment. What I did here at the top left, which is I think it's I, still breaking up. Um, still breaking up. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. may have to log in and log back out. Are you all hearing the same thing? Anybody? Yes, I am. Yes, yes. it yes, is breaking up. I think maybe if you talk maybe just a little slower, it may be able to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm talking too fast for the network. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me see. Let's see. Because I want to show you all. Okay. Let's see. It's clear now. Okay. Maybe I was talking too fast. I was just blowing up my own speed. I'm closed. Okay. So here's the left part of the screen. One of the things that I did is saying I'm gonna see if I can work backwards from my stuff is moving ridiculously slow now. You can tell one of the things that I got from this page is here at the top left under this is business builder, you'll see that it's home health care services. I just clicked in right now, so I'll try to stop. So, what I did on the screen, because I was going to use, what I did was I went to the history of home health care. So, I did a search on home care service, and then I did history for Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. So, the now me, you hear me? You're still like, I'll break it up. You may have to log in and log back out because it's pretty breaking up. Try this. 
every other I mean, word. Up to the place. Close my real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move. Okay, real quick. Jeez. Looks like it's good information though. <laughs> mm -mm. What are y'all hearing and taking away as as we try to figure out the logistics? Austin, Pat, Ms. Paul. I'm kind of hearing, um, you know, just being able to gauge your competition to see how, you know, how many other businesses are around you that, you know, could be possibly competing against, you know, the same type of bids and solicitations that you are. So you can kind of, you know, navigate that and use that when you're pre preparing your proposals and your bids. Um, and I, I guess, again, for me, what I'm hearing is if I'm finding a contract as it's like roofer, I'm looking for a, a, some roofers, then maybe I can use this tool to find potential. I know there's a, a high level of concentrated roofers in this county in that area. And then all I can do is just take that information and put it in Google. I guess that's the way my mindset was thinking. How about you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. So to that point, yes, because one of the things, so, so to answer your question, that's what the tool can at least allow you to have that information to uh, make a decision on. Am I still sounding good or am I breaking up? No, you sound much better. Okay, good. I'm literally sitting right next to, to, to my router. So, <laughs> all right. Let me try to share my screen again this time with just the tool. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this might be weird. I might see myself. Oh, no, no, no. I'll just do the application. Okay, do you all see Census Business Builder? Now? Oh, yes, and it's much better. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so let's go back to that example. So let's try Fulton. Yep, it's moving faster for me already. So again, if I'm going into Fulton County, mm -hmm. now you'll see that it now is rendering the geography for the particular county. And again, right now, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to show me all sectors. So you'll see, I'll just minimize the map quickly. It just now gives you sort of uh, the information. So Paul, like you said, Atlanta's kind of broken up into different because again, we're looking at counties because what's interesting is even through this tool, you'll see how city geographies are really, really weird, like how they're drawn and all that, but that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. So this is now just for all establishments. But the point I wanted to make was if now I can go here and now I can select different industries. So the example that I was using earlier was if I was interested in home health care. So as I type in home health, system now gives back to me anything that has the term home health in it. So then I get different options with different codes. Again, I've done the same example for pest control, uh, a notary service, barber shops. So again, you can pick any particular industry that you want to look at. So I'm going to select home health care services. And you'll notice behind the screen, the map is now starting to re-render. So you'll notice here at the bottom, it'll say now that there are 129 home healthcare employer businesses in Fulton County. So again, that's one piece of information to let me know what's going on in Fulton County in terms of that particular industry. So now that's one step to give me some more information. But if I click on the secondary variable, now you get to see all the rich information that can be determined in this particular industry and across different types of geographies. So what I wanna do is under the business annual data, I wanna also find out how many non-employer home healthcare providers exist. So again, earlier, remember I said there were 129 employer home healthcare businesses. If I now change that variable to show all non-employer businesses, now I see here to the left, there are 1,300 non-employer home healthcare businesses in Fulton County. 
So again, and you're so the question is non-employer as someone with no employees, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Yep. Yep. So a person that is considered an employer, you are preparing tax documents. I actually remember the I think it's form tax form 940 or 941. But mm -hmm. you are preparing tax forms that say you have employees. That is how we distinguish non-employers versus employers. So yes. So if I'm again looking at the so not only am I if I'm a home health care provider, this lets me know how many other businesses are just like mine in this particular county. So again, that lets me know what my competition is in this particular county. One of the nice features with this tool is not only can I see the county that I'm looking at in Fulton, if I move my cursor to the next county, I now see that information right there on the screen. So in Cobb County, there are 984 of these particular of these particular businesses, non-employer home health care services in Cobb County. If I move my cursor over here to Paulding County, again, there are 229. So what the tool allows you to do is move your cursor over different geographies to see some of the different features. Another thing that I want to show you, again, if I select in this variable section, so not only do I look at non-employer variables, another tool that's key data element that is your key ratios. So let's say I am a business and I have a home health care service and I'm looking to figure out, oops, sorry if you didn't see that on the cursor, if I want to look at some of the key ratios and I'm trying to figure out how much do I want to pay my employees to be competitive. One of the options under key ratio is average payroll per employee. So I can now select that as a secondary variable. So again, what is this tool now giving me? In Fulton County, home health care services, there are 129 employer home health care services in Fulton County. There are 1,300 non-employer home health care services in Fulton County, the data element I just pulled up, on average, payroll per employee is $33,000 per year, close to $34,000 per year. So again, if I'm looking to advertise, so not only is this tool helpful for businesses looking to open a new business, but also awareness for businesses just to see what's going on in their particular industry. So again, if I own a home healthcare business and I want to say, hey, I want to hire some new staff, but I'm going to put an ad in the paper for $20,000 for home health care providers. And again, I'm dating myself because I don't think anybody uses the paper anymore to <laughs> advertise anything. So however you advertise for to say you want to get people to, let's say, to get employees to sign up, but you're advertising at $20,000, this can let you know, well, on average, the average payroll per employee is $33,000. So again, it gives you more information to say, oh, okay, this is what the average payroll per employee. Another key data element, just to show, and then I'll pause, then I'll pause for a question. Another yes. element to show is average employment per employer. So if I can change that now as another data element. So I change that and you'll see now here to the bottom left, you'll see that that element has now changed to 39. So again, looking at employer owned home health care services, on average, they pay $33,000 per employee. And here you can see on average, they have a staff of about 40 people. Mm -hmm. But again, what the tool allows you to do is if you minimize the dashboard, I can then move my cursor over any corresponding county to see what the similar comparison is as well. So you see how those data elements to see that the average payroll I'm sorry, the average employment in Cobb County is 33. The average employment in Paulding County is 17. So again, this now gives you more information to say, hey, I'm opening a home health care service and I have five people. That's wonderful. Great. Do your thing. But just so that you know, on average, in my particular county, if I, again, if I'm looking at Fulton County, on average, there's 39 people on average in home health care services in a particular industry. Paul, you had a question. I have um, a lot of our client base across the country is in the real estate industry. Okay. A lot of 
agents and brokers, how would they be able to leverage these tools in that industry? Absolutely. So we actually do a lot of presentations with real estate because one of the things in the real estate industry is especially as people are looking for homes, not only do we have home ownership information just to see what the home ownership rates are in terms of income to see, okay, what types of clients are going to be in a particular county, but we also have then population as well because that's a combination to say, well, how many supermarkets are in a particular area? I might want to try to target my business to that particular county. So let me show you how this tool can then be used for that. So everything that I just showed you, again, is in a particular industry. So the real estate industry will have an industry for real estate agents just to see how many other real estate agents there are. But the way that a, a real estate agent could use this tool is here at the bottom left, you'll see an option that says create report. If I click on create report, everything that we've been looking at visually that I haven't even actually clicked on all of the demographic information that's available. If I click on the create report, all of those different options of data sets that I quickly scroll through, you can now see that information here to see the demographic makeup. So not only in Fulton County. So again, this is a report of the particular geography that I've selected of Fulton County. So if I'm a real estate agent, I want to go to the area that has the highest, greatest population. So again, I get the population, I get the percent male, I get the percent over a certain age, I get the percent over 65 years of old, I get the racial background. So again, if, so Paul, I'm gonna come back to your question. So again, if I am targeting a particular business and I want to target men, for example, I may want to look at what's the percentage versus a certain county. And again, I can select that variable just as I selected the variable based on the average employment or the average income. I can do the same thing for percentage of male. And I'll go back and I'll show you that in the tool. So these are the demographic characteristics. When I scroll down, I also see now the socioeconomic characteristics. So if I'm a real estate agent, I want to get a sense of what is the median household income? What is the average income? So as I'm showing homes to people in a particular community, not only as a real estate agent will say, well, what's your price range? What are you looking for? This gives a real estate agent information in advance to know what is the type of market that I'm dealing with in terms of average income. I can take this information and compare it across counties so that I have to know if I look at Cobb County, again, I don't know the makeup of Georgia like that, but if I look at Cobb County and I see that Cobb County has a higher income, a higher median household income, I may want to target more of my services and resources to that county versus another county that may not have as much income. We, do, we see the same type of thing as people are investing in certain types of products. So if um, so some of the trends, oh, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me slow down because the, the lady that had mentioned earlier, she said, maybe you're talking too fast for your Wi-Fi. What can happen is I can get kind of excited when I start talking about the different options that are available. So let me exhale and slow down because I'm kind of going fast. I feel, I feel myself going fast. Um, so one of the other elements that is also a part of this too is housing characteristics. So as a real estate agent, again, this is all a part of the data and the information we collect from the American Community Survey. This lets me know the number of housing units. This lets me know the home ownership rate. So again, lets me know the opportunity of people that want to be homeowners. It already lets me know what it is in that particular county. Lets me know the vacancy rate. And it also speaks to some of that information as it relates to resiliency, those that have broadband, so again, it gives you more information about the community as itself down to a particular geography. Mm -hmm. And then as I scroll down again, like I said, this isn't information. So when we were in that variable section and then I was clicking on some of the different key ratios and maybe you all saw that there were a lot of other variables, these are all those other variables. So again, this is the home healthcare services sector that I was talking about. Now this gives me a breakdown of establishments with less than five employees, establishments with five to nine employees. So again, as I gave the example that the average was 39, there are businesses that do have, there are 60 businesses that have less than five employees. 
So while I made that comparison, we do see that those businesses are operating. We do see that there are businesses with five to nine employees. So again, this just gives you more of that rich information um, that I showed you visually, but now it also gives you that information in a report form. Mm -hmm. And then all this information you can scroll through. Again, it shows you that non-employer information that I have pulled up, their average revenue, and so forth. This is good stuff. Do you all agree? They quiet over there. <laughs> uh, yes, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I went too fast for, <laughs> for the connection. But what's great is so I, I opened up a couple of screens. So let me show you all this very quickly, because again, with this tool, so not only am I highlighting businesses. So again, for the example that I mentioned earlier, I can just move my cursor across different areas and I can get that information on all different types of things. What I can, what I'm doing here is at the top of the screen is you see where I select the different types of variables. I can switch between the primary variable and a secondary variable. So you'll notice that there are two sets of variables that are on the screen. So if I want to look at both key ratios of payroll and employment, I can have both of those up at the same time because I was kind of jumping back and forth between different examples. So you'll see that I've now changed the average payroll is about 33,000 and then the average employment is 39 people per location. Mm -hmm. So again, that's the information. So I can jump between all different types of variables. I can also change that variable. I can go back and look at consumers and residents. So if I wanna look at the percent male, let's say for my home healthcare, I'm targeting men. I'm really one, I'm really interested in the male population because they need this support. If I change that percent variable to percent men, you'll now see how now the map is now updating with different content. So all of these different variables that I'm showing, you can change the map to be whatever variable you want it to be. So now again, if I go back over my cursor, you'll now see that that percent male is 48%. I go over here to Cobb County, that's about 48%. I now go over here to Paulding, 48%. So it's kind of interesting that it's consistently being about 48%. But again, any variable that you can pull up, you can use through this particular type of tool to pull that information. And then again, once you select that create report option, all of that information is available here. And up here to the top right, where it says export data, I can turn this into a PDF file or I can turn this into an Excel form where now I can download all of this data and then I can manipulate it and adjust it in any or put it into any other type of format that I actually want to see. So the PDF version will actually give you everything that I am presenting right now with all the graphs, all the tables and all the source information that is available. It even gives you a graphic of the county that we are looking at. So I know I covered that quickly. So I thank you all for your patience because I had to switch locations. Are there any questions about this particular tool? Uh, and, the, and the one other thing that I do wanna mention as well too. So while I moved very quickly and moved around, like if Paula at this point said, hey, you know what? That's really cool how you pulled up the percent mail and this, this URL, will pull up exactly to this screenshot that I have created. One of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did was we wanted to allow this tool to save whatever URL you're on to be able to send it to anyone. So as we do research, as we get calls from data users and we pull up this information, I can pull this file and I can send this file directly to someone to say, oh. hey, I want you to pull up my industry. I pulled it up, sent the file directly to them and then they can then use it. Go ahead. So in my layman's mind, um, you're showing me there is that 48%, that county consists of 48% men, but not That's necessarily correct. with a focus on the home health care service. I think that was where my disconnect and my math is, is going. That's correct. That's correct. So, and I, I apologize for that confusion. It's, it's both a blessing and a curse with this tool because it combines both demographic and economic data. So I can move in and out of 
the home health care industry, which again, that's this part of the data, because that's going to show me my economic part. But then I can also move into demographic data as well. So if I change this industry to all sectors, my percentage of men won't change, but my employment will change. If that makes sense. So you can look at both. So you're, we're looking at both demographic and economic data at the same time. What will happen is the tool will kick out certain details if it breaks the, the a disclosure violation. So, for example, if I then wanted to look at Roswell to dive deeper into a particular region or into a particular zip code, if I tried to do that, I'll lose the data for the healthcare information because at the greater level of detail, I can still see the demographic data, but I start to lose the business data. So that's why I said at the county level, you can get a cross section of all of this content. So my apologies for that confusion, but <laughs> the, the, both the demographic and the economic data can reside at the county level and you can still see all of that information. All right, Ms. Cochran, you're up in St. Louis. And again, you're in that real estate space. How do you how do you see this data being used to assist you on the commercial side? Well, I would say really, you know, pulling up the information and being able to have those intricate details about um, you know, different business sectors that are around you. Being an agent, we deal with a lot of different um industries, you know, from landscapers to roofers to, you know, different different types of people that service us throughout that contract. So um, really being able to just have an insight on um, how many people and where they are and what their demographics are can be really helpful, I, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Very so good. As, as you were mentioning that, I think that's that's even a great example too, because again, the example that I pulled, you just envision so many other industries. So the comment that just was made, we deal with a lot of landscapers. So I just typed in landscape and just to see. So we, we again, landscaping services. You wanna find out, well, how many landscapers are in a particular area? That can be something that done, that's done. You wanna find out how many um, supermarkets are in a particular area. You can say, hey, I wanna look at supermarkets. So even too, as a, as a real estate agent, if someone says, hey, I'm interested in this county, can you tell me how many supermarkets are here? Oh, sure. Go into Census Business Builder, find out how many supermarkets. There are approximately 400 supermarkets in this area. Mm -hmm. Actually, let me do that real quick. And then again, we're almost at time. So again, I wanna be mindful of time. So not only is this used for businesses, to get a sense of their industry and so forth, it can also be used for entities such as real estate to say, hey, you wanna know how many supermarkets are in a particular area? So right now I've just selected supermarkets. And what's interesting is the tool, you'll notice if you still can see my screen, you'll notice that when I typed in landscaping services, supermarkets were added as well too. This tool will actually allow you to combine different industries to get a larger swath of a particular industry. So one of the examples that I used earlier is I did barber shops, beauty salons, and beauty supply stores. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody's in that industry, well, you don't want to just know barber shops because you all, well, I won't assume, because in barber shops, sometimes there are beauty salons inside of barbershops. So it can give you a wider scope of a particular industry. But for me, if I were a real estate agent, for example, I can look at the number of supermarkets. I select supermarkets in a particular area. And right now, I am now shown there are approximately 59, oh no, that's, okay, right here at the bottom. There are approximately 180 supermarkets employer supermarkets in Fulton County. So again, if somebody is curious about that, okay, hey, how many are in this particular county? And they may say, I want to know in the zip code. Again, that's where the county level data starts to enter into disclosure issues. But at least at the county level, you can know immediately right off. And that actually, let me change that. And then I'm going to pause to see if there are any last questions so you all can see that. So my primary variable right now is set on percent male. 
but now I want to change that to businesses annual. I want to look at all employer establishments of supermarkets in that particular area. So now this lets me know here to the left in Fulton County, there are 179 super employer supermarkets in Fulton County. And if I were just curious, on average, they hire 59 people. Because again, this tool will now update whatever industry you have selected. So remember, I had selected home health care and it said there were 39 people on average. Well, now I've changed the industry to supermarkets. So now this lets me know on average, supermarkets have average 59 people in this particular county. I then can move my cursor to say, oh, well, how many are in Cobb County? 119. How many are in Paulding County? There are 13. So there are only 13 supermarkets in Paulding County. So again, it, it just gives you more information about what's going on in a particular geography. Very good. This is good. So <laughs> yes, and we are at one o'clock. We are at time, and I want to be respectful to uh -huh. our time. Um, anyone have any last minute questions? Did you all enjoy this? Yes, get... thank you. Thank you so much. I, I this is gonna help yes, me be the yes. expert in my in, in real estate. And oh, there's 43 um general, you know, stores over here just to help me, you know, really become that subject matter subject matter matter expert. <laughs> and, and, and Paula and Paula too as a last comment. I'll share with you my slides because my slides at the very end have my email. So if there's anyone that has a question, like if there's something that I covered today um, to the person, I, I missed your name. But like if you say, hey, you know, I would love to pull that up, send me an email to say, hey, can you pull this up for this particular region? I would have no problem with pulling that up, but I'll send you the slides and then you can. Oh, you know what? Let me put my email in the chat. So if anybody does have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and say, hey, we were in that. Um, you were in that webinar on Friday that you had to go downstairs and <laughs> where your internet crashed with you. So, so that's my email there. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And always remember next week, we're going to be doing, uh, you have to uh, bid to win part two with Miss Smith as she shared her journey on how she's won four contracts since, since June. Um, so hopefully, again, we'll see you there. And again, thank you again, Mr. Wooten, and, and bringing this knowledge to our community. And um, yes, we appreciate you. And what thank you, you at um, the Census Bureau. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to share. You all have a great weekend. All right. All right. Great job. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.